There is definitely a reason I've been putting this off. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Sailing for Power. We're currently underway to the beautiful Great Barrier Reef. We're going to Fitzroy Lagoon today, or Fitzroy Reef. Michael's sitting over here, navigating, like the chips. <laughs> What's going on there, Scotty? No comment. <laughs> so we've got a couple more miles to go. We haven't filmed much of the sail. It's been beautiful. 15 knots on the beam the whole way out here. It's only about 30 miles. So we actually checked the weather last night. We are in bed. We've got under 15 knots for the next three or four days. So we're going for it. Um, 15 is usually our cutoff. Um, we'll hang in windier stuff, but as long as it drops off again. But it looks like we're going to get a big blow on Monday for the for a week. So we're getting out here, we're going to squeeze in a couple more days at the reef, and uh, yeah, then we'll probably head further north off to the Swains in the outer outer Great Barrier Reef. So just sort of um, having a bit of a shakedown cruise and stretching the lungs, the legs, and the sails, and Michael's stomach. How many miles have we done? What's going on? Give us some stats. We're here six. Some of those chitties. Just under seven miles from. Whoa! Hold the foam. Just been marking stuff on the way. Oops. Um, but yeah, we're about just under seven miles from the entrance. High tide's at four, but I find that the run in tide is not as. Uh, as there's not as much out. flow because there's waves coming over the reef as well. It's not as concentrated. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go up to the entrance and when we get there and see what it's like. It's going about 16 knots now, but, you know, we're on the beam. Um, Fitzroy Lagoon is like a big C-shaped anchorage or bit of reef. So there's a very small entrance in on the leeward side from the wind. There's no swell, there's no wind. So we'll cut sneak into that cut, pick up a mooring. You can't actually anchor in a lot of the lagoons, so if you do come out here, make sure you check the map. So we're just coming in behind the reef now. It is glorious, glowing, and it's so, so beautiful. How's that? We almost weren't gonna come because the weather wasn't good. And I just, we were so tired last night. I just had a quick check and I was like, oh, better get some sleep. Looks like yeah. we're going to the reef tomorrow. We're very unprepared, we've got no water, we need to make water basically as soon as we get there because we thought we were going to Gladstone to the marina for the first time ever. Um, we were going to stop in there to get a few jobs done. We ended up at the roof instead, how much better is that? Sails are down, we're on our way into the lagoon. Got a run in tide, two hours before high tides. Can't see a ridiculous amount of overrun or current or anything so I think it'll be fine. Drop the anchor four meters. This is the best anchorage in Fitzroy, hands down. Look at this. Yo! How good! Woo! This beats the marina, that's for sure. Damn sure. <laughs> oh, far up. Okay, shut down procedures. Engines. Chart plotters. The instruments and NMEA network and the autopilot off. She's our most Water. important passenger on the boat. She gets put away and then we have a cap for the tiller pilot plug. That just stops any moisture or salt, mostly salt getting in there and corroding the fittings. And then we we'll pull the engines up so they that. don't get more uh, salt water on them than they need to. Anchor winch off and then we go on the deck and we just make sure all the ropes are tied up, put away, sails are put away properly. This is so tight. This is ridiculous. I'm losing it. Look at it. Look out the window. Oh! So it's a bit too windy to send the drone up so I'll send Jessie up instead. She's never been up the mast. Today's the day. 
It's a bit embarrassing, really. I can't actually believe I've never been up the mark. Three years. Three years. So we just. So we picked the windiest know. day, <laughs> windiest day, and the yeah. most remote spot to do it. Oh, it's not that remote. Figure out how to tie this GoPro off in case I get butterfingers at the top of the mast. All right, here we go. Hopefully, Michael doesn't kill me. I'm actually getting nervous now. <gasps> there is definitely a reason I've been putting this off. <laughs> I've never held so tightly onto something. It is actually, it's bloody high up here. <laughs> I didn't think I was scared of heights, but uh, uh, I'm pretty nervous right now. Oh, <sighs> far out. Look at this view though. It's a bit wobbly up here. Imagine, imagine Alan Sparks is about 27 metres. Oh, I couldn't imagine on a mono like where they've got these massive like 20, 20 plus rigs, like we're 12 metres. Like, so worth coming up here. a lot of respect for Michael who's spent days on end up here working it is so it's so rocky up here compared to on the deck it's ridiculous oh look at our new radar Ooh. oh I've sailed down 30 meter waterfalls but I still got jelly legs going up there that was uh that was crazy so good good do you want to go up no. you're in the drone you're like in you can see what the drone sees man all right we'll send me up <laughs> good morning we are at the reef yeah had a bit of a quiet afternoon yesterday just enjoyed being at the reef and yeah we made some water made lots of noise and now we are just gearing up to head out for a dive um, we really want to try and get some craze today. That's the target, one of the target species. Michael, any requests? I want to go visit the Jack Cave again. <laughs> he wants to go visit the Jack Cave again. Are you going to shoot one? Undecided. Undecided, that's a yes. I'll, I'll be going arm. <laughs> just getting all the dive gear ready. Um, Michael's just refilling the tender. Oh well, before we go, we always like to check the anchor because we uh, leave the boat all day basically. It was good to check. It was interesting to come back here after two years. 
Not much had changed. The same big rays were in the exact same spot as last time. There were plenty of giant trevally and a bunch of jacks. Five or six big black rays, big trout hanging off. G I looked in the cave and it's full of GTs. No jacks. And heaps of Spanish coming in on the front really? edge. Like heaps. I, think, I oh, can see like, them on the sounder. Yeah, I don't know, 15 kilos. And they just all came up to greet me. They're like, yeah. the current's yeah. pumping. Yeah. After a pretty unsuccessful cray dive in the shallows, we were swimming back to the boat when I spotted a nice red throat. As I didn't have my gun loaded, I signalled Michael to drop down in its direction. It's not a huge one. Bommy on our last trip up here, and we were keen to see if it had changed much. It felt pretty similar to the last time. Every cave was full of red bait, with a big lionfish hiding underneath, gorging itself. I'm sure it was the exact same wrasse, a turtle, and even what looked like the same small school of hussar hiding in the shadow of this ledge.
next episode on Sailing Papau. Seriously missed working out like this. We head out to find some new dive spots, pleasantly surprised. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to all our patrons for your support.